welcome everybody. This is Paul Mills, also known as Binary, here for another Raptorium stream. This week we have an in-depth AMA for you all. We've been collecting some questions over the last few days on an anonymous form. And we'll be answering each and every question in depth for you all. If you do have an additional question for us, don't forget you can fire it into the uh, YouTube uh, comments. We're also taking questions in the stream party chat. As usual, we're doing some rain in the stream party chat as well. If you're not already in our Discord, head over to the top right of the stream. Discord.dg forward slash Raptorium. Don't forget to follow this YouTube channel as well. Also click the little bell to be kept up to date with any new videos. We do this every single Sunday. You can also follow us at Twitter and Instagram, both at Raptorium. Just want to say a big thanks to Carl Casey from Whitebat Audio. And also Infraction as well, for giving us some nice tunes. What's up, Wiz? How you doing, Mr. 1984? Alvidas? Let's get this going, guys. How you doing, RQ? What's up, Jolian? Yeah, yeah, that's right, man. Thanks for that. Oh, you know my bro? Where do you know my brother from? Ah, awesome, man. Fernando about another 10 minutes guys and we'll get started with the Raptorium AMA
<laughs> nice image, Wiz. I like that. Yeah, I'm just talking about the one in stream party chat. What's up, Pinja? Sub Zero? Azorian? Great to see you guys. And we've got to lose thyself. So Piperian, yo, 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 yo. That's right. Jamadis, if you're watching, awesome work lately, man. Awesome work. That's right, Falcon. Seriously, rig capture. Just about five minutes away, guys, and then we'll get started.
Looks like we've got a full house here and ready for you all. Yeah, of course, Pepe, we're going to try and do the timestamps thing. Thanks for the rain, Falcon. <laughs> you want me to make it bigger, Sub Zero? Guys, let's get over to the team. How are you doing, guys? Can you hear us? Can hear you. How are you doing? Doing well. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank Very you. good, man. Thank you all for waiting around. Um, and we are here for a lengthy Raptorium AMA. I think it's about about time. Um, for this AMA, we uh, we opened an anonymous uh, Google form, which didn't require an email. And we've collected uh, many questions and we're going to go through each and every question and answer answer it in as lengthy and, and as in full as we can. Um, so uh, I suppose we just get started, Piggy. Okay. So, so the, uh, the first question that we received um, is 
has the Raptorian blockchain gained any real world adoption yet? Are there any applications or projects that the team is aware of that can be shared and will utilize RTM in the future? I think I'll, uh, I'll pass that to Charlie. Charlie, are you on bro? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm just trying to get, uh, can you hear me first of all? Yes. Loud yep. and clear. Sounds great. Yeah. Just, uh, had a router problem in my shop and, uh, it's not behaving, so I don't have video right now. Uh, no stress, uh, man. Any real wor world adoption? I mean, yes, a bit. Uh, obviously, we don't have our major features that we're waiting for yet, assets, uh, smart contracts, etc. But we do have uh, GhostPress, which is anonymous WordPress hosting, which uses Raptorium RTM as a, uh, a payment option and also uses the cryptography in the wallet uh to be able to create uh, passwordless email uh, accounts or add a uh second factor uh authentication to like traditional accounts um that'll be opening very soon probably within the next week uh we have the raptorium shop ran by the community where you can buy um various uh raptorium swags sweaters t-shirts hoodies all of that type of stuff using rtm as a currency uh, what else we got? We got the, uh, of course, everybody knows the wallet bot, wallet bot in Discord, which is pretty heavily used on a daily basis. Uh, tipping, rain, uh, during uh, trivia and all of that. So it's a great uh, use case for it. We also have the Twitter bot, Raptoshi. Uh, it's currently being revamped due to uh, Twitter's API changes. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> We're making that at the same time. We're going to make it more friendly to use. It's been around for a while, but uh, it wasn't exactly user friendly, which obviously is one of the big things that we want to um, improve on, uh, not just with the bot, but in crypto and blockchain in general. So we're revamping that, and it'll be a great way to incentivize tweets and replies and hashtag use and uh, things like that. We also have the We Use RTM platform which will be coming um, basically like a uh, uh, a mini marketplace where individuals, small business, et cetera, can easily create uh, NFTs and attach them to um, products or items. And as those items or products are transferred around within the marketplace, uh, you have, uh, it adds uh, traceability. It also adds uh, electronic proof of ownership and authenticity within the marketplace, of course. And then, of course, we have CryptoSmith, which has been going for a few years now, where all of the items that he is making will be tokenized on the Raptorium blockchain. And all of those physical items have the virtual items, uh, have virtual replicas made, exact virtual replicas, which, of course, can be brought into anything online that you could think of multiple different games cross-platform um things like that so that's just waiting on assets to come onto mainnet and uh, all of this stuff will start popping off uh once we have assets on mainnet so they're just just there by itself i mean there's quite a few different uh example use cases um, people can kind of use that to get ideas and build off of them yeah Okay, uh, the next question is, uh, could the Raptorium team be a little bit, bit more active on Twitter and social media in order to help boost marketing and spread the knowledge of Raptorium? I'll, I can answer that if you want. Um, absolutely, uh, we can always be more active and we are constantly adding to our marketing structure. Um, we're already active on Twitter and other social media platforms internationally on a daily basis. Um, if one was to compare our twitter to solana um yes they have more followers but we put over 10 times more content if you would check that out you know it's the same with casper bitcoin and many more uh, we do put out much more content um, it, um and that's just on the english as well um let's we can't forget that we do have around another 15 uh, different accounts on all different platforms uh, going out in all different languages also and um, we are proud to have uh, built this um, fully organically right now without using anything artificial. Um, 
our plan um, always was uh, fully organic marketing right up until the asset release. Uh, then we would step up more with paid content content and promotions um, much more significantly. Um, in the short term, uh, we now have uh, an awesome team uh, in Arabic that we've been working on getting set up. Uh, me and Sherm have been spending some time over there and making them feel a lot more at home and uh, and they're already doing some amazing work. Um, so yeah, great stuff from them. And, and Abo and the rest of his team, if you are watching, uh, big thanks to everything that you've been doing so far. Um, next question. Um, why does Yerbas already have assets and RTM does not? I'll uh, pass that to Piggy. Oh, okay. Well, um, their assets and what we're going to end up with are completely different. They they essentially have a port of the Raven style of assets, which can't do most of the things we want it to do. It doesn't use its own op ID, if you can call it like that. Yeah, you can call it that. Um, which facilitates the whole thing we've been talking about with transaction decoupling, moving asset transactions to side chains or onto the smart nodes, if that is easier to understand as a concept. Um, so, yeah. That's why you can see some of the same code being merged and assessed now on RTM, but you can also see quite a few differences in the code between RTM and Yerbas in terms of what's being accepted in for merger. So, yeah. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, why is one of the former team members saying that exchange funds were stolen? Uh, I'll pass that to Piggy as well, I suppose. All right. Um, I don't really know why he's saying that. Let's... I'll go over what we've done. I mean, back in February, I don't know. Yeah, February, early April. Um, we, from February to early April, we started raising funds to list on Bitmart and Indodax. Back then, the crux of that deal was to initially list on BSC, and both would then proceed to list first the wrapped version, followed later by a full integration. The target for that was 14 million RTM at early February pricing. That goal was never really reached. We got to 11 million, 11.1, I believe, where roughly 70% of that came from the team. However, right when things were about to get interesting, the Ukraine war kicked off and it had a horrible effect on the value of that RTM. We'd already contracted with a bridge developer to help deploy the bridge to BSC. So that ate through a considerably larger chunk that and pooling the liquidity ate through a significantly larger chunk of what we had available than what it was planned to do. Three nodes were set up with the remainder of um, the RTM that were left over. And then we had oh, half a node also in change. which we did use some of to set up backbone seed nodes in order to take advantage of paying for that over the course of a whole year. 
we were unable to pursue the planned cooperation with Indodax as an alternative to Bitmart because of new Indonesian government requirements. They want you to basically be licensed in the country you operate in, uh, as we are operating via Seychelles company. The Seychelles don't have any way for a company to get registered as an issue of virtual currency. So that got put on hold. Also, since then, they've put in some new requirements to what kind of assets can and cannot be listed. And unfortunately, the CoinJoin feature we currently have in place may technically disqualify us from that. Unless we go through a lengthy legal review process, again, which we've already done for in the US with the Howey memo we purchased, um, we would have to do something similar to Indonesia, and that would bring the cost to a ridiculous level. So, once October rolled around, the worst of the war shock had subsided, exchanges were becoming approachable again, and the team were made an offer by a very solid Hong Kong and Singapore-based exchange. So we liquidated the remaining pooled funds and threw in several million additional RTM from the team. OTC was slow. So we initially only paid a deposit on the listing. And then in November, after receiving multiple assurances that the exchange we were working with was 100% free from FTX exposure, this unfortunately turned out to be a lie. We went and paid for the full amount. Their market maker wiped on FTX. They folded without listing us. It was not just us that suffered. Several other coins had listed on there a week prior. We've initiated legal action, or well, I have as the director who signed the contract with them. And the legal action we've taken is we've filed reports with the Hong Kong police. Arrests have been made. So what we're waiting for is an initial hearing in Hong Kong that will separate fraudulently acquired funds from the general bankruptcy. Once that's done, we'll be sharing full details of the exchange, personnel involved, their practices, everything, the whole nine yards. So, in December, the team from its own pocket added P2B, including providing market making funds in the belief that they'd been separated from their criminal Italian and Lithuanian management. This turned out not to have been the case. We had a month and a bit of decent trading volume, 99% of it being botted. But it is what it is, and we've made comments about this listing on previous streams. Yeah, that's that. Okay. Um, who on the team is responsible for security with Legion now gone? Uh, oh, so I suppose Piggy's the best one to answer that. Piggy again, I suppose. Um, uh, not necessarily, but yeah, okay. I mean, the core team and developers have taken over this responsibility. 
just as it was never really solely his responsibility in the first place. One has to understand that our development team are extremely skilled guys. And they always have been. So nothing has really changed. Yeah, I mean, everything that comes in has multiple eyes on it. I mean, we have uh, Jamie looking at stuff. We have, uh, I mean, the guy's a master at finding uh, any type of inconsistencies or bugs. I mean, he's coding for, I mean, satellites, kind of a rocket scientist kind of guy, right? So, <laughs> I mean, we, there's lots of eyes on it. We have monitoring set up that monitors the blockchain, alerts us of uh, anything suspicious going on uh, via that. Um, I mean, it, it's it's very well covered. Uh, it's, it's better covered as it ever has been. We just continually improve on it. Nando, so, I mean, Nando's yeah. been complete fire lately, hasn't he? He's been brilliant. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And Nando, uh, he's constantly going through the code, and uh, he's, uh, like I said, multiple sets of eyes on it, uh, including Nando, which he's been an absolute, uh, like you said, on fire. So super thankful to have all of those guys with uh, eyes on the code. Everything that goes through is very well tested, and uh, the security is uh, very good. Yeah, and before somebody gets confused and starts to think, why have you got somebody in who's running a fork? Well, somebody who's running a fork, they've had a very long, hard, and thorough look at the code. Otherwise, they wouldn't be running a fork. RTM code base isn't code that you just switch on and off. It's not like old school dash forks from 2018 where you could <laughs> basically just no. launch them and ignore them and it would run regardless of what you did uh, this is a very different animal okay next question how many chairs has big piggy broken in the last 12 months <laughs> how many chairs have you broken piggy uh, in the last 12 months well we said we would answer every single question so yeah how many chairs have you broken okay, in the last 12 yeah. months uh, it's the last three months i've broken two okay i i hadn't i hadn't broken any in an age before that but yeah i think it's two Okay. Yeah, yes. we moved. We moved just before the start of the hot season last year, and the hot season has just made the plastic in the chairs that tiny little bit softer. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, have you got any chairs lined up for when for when the next one breaks? I mean, I know you've only just had a nice new chair. Uh, that one's not breaking. Regardless, <laughs> I've seen his new chair. I, I don't think that's going to break. I'm... No, it's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, next question: Why are there no commits on GitHub from Legion? Uh, suppose I'll pass that to Charlie. Uh, Legion was never a developer. That's not why he was brought on. He was brought on uh, from a, a security perspective. So he is not uh, not saying he cannot code, but that was not his uh, his job with RTM. So he never wrote any code uh, to the best of my knowledge for RTM, and he never made any commits. OK. Uh, next question. Uh, why angry man say team sell RTM future? I assume that is why did the angry man say team sell RTM future? Uh, Piggy? I'm not really sure if this refers to uh, I'm Legion or not, but uh, if it does refer to him, he wasn't necessarily part of any financial decisions and has 
very limited idea of what was really going on in that regard. Are we pursuing external funding? Yes, we most definitely are. But we are not pursuing that external funding as RTM. We're pursuing that over on NAUP, and NAUP have graciously agreed to give RTM the main project a solid grant once their raise completes. So um, I'm not quite sure how that's selling the RTM future, if that's what's in question. Um, will this in any way relinquish control and direction from the team and the community? Absolutely not. Funding will never be allowed to dictate the direction on RTM and the community, and we're not involved with any VC or liquidity providers in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Are you done, Piggy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what happened to the donations that were collected from exchange listings? Oh, I think we've already done that one. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, I appreciate the team trying to do their best even in these troubling times. It is what keeps me believing and still invested. Hope that continues. Uh, thank whoever sent that. Thank you. It will continue. Raptorium is relentless. Next question. Um, what is a woman? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> that's what he says. What is a woman? Uh, Piggy? What what is a woman? Um, ask humble. We're not women. Okay. <laughs> humble. If you could let everyone know in the chat what a woman is, that would be great. Uh, uh, another question. I think we've had this one already. Why are there no commits on GitHub from I am Legion? Um. Uh. Yeah. So as was explained earlier, he was never a developer but I suppose rather a security consultant for the network. Next question. Uh, why tranny talk ban on Discord? Many, many like tea girls. I'll pass that one to Piggy. He's a specialist in that. Oh, that's because I'm a jackbooted thug and like to stamp on minorities and I get a kick out of that. It's not really something that has any place at least not in a general channel on a blockchain server and if anybody's got a problem with that they shouldn't be engaging in a space where they need to engage with children who are underage but smart and well ahead of their time people with very strong religious views they are all in there one big hodgepodge in the general channel so it's not a place where that subject is appropriate especially not when we have dedicated channels where you can pretty much get your freak on to whatever extent you want and not bother anybody are you done with that one yeah all right uh, why did someone say that the team are selling the Raptorium future? I think we've had that one already as well. Uh, I mean, I assume he's talking of, talking about Legion and, uh, as we've said, you know, out of touch with financials and not really understanding the uh, bigger picture of of what it what it actually means. Uh, what happened to the donations that were collected from exchange listings? It's the same question again. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll skip that one. Um, another one saying, uh, appreciate everything we're doing um, and happy that we're seeing past all of this. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, Random acts of kindness like this are why we never stop and we just keep on going. Um, next question. I've heard something about a blockchain trilemma. Bitcoin sacrifices scalability, but is very secure and decentralized. Ethereum is more scalable, 
but sacrifices decentralization. What trade-off does Raptorium do, uh, Piggy? Um, we've pretty much gotten around that. We're working with a unique architectural concept where we should be able to scale without losing any decentralization at all. Okay. Uh, can you please give specifics of what sets Raptorium apart from other coins? What are the clear benefits of RTM that I could use to share to other people? Um, shall I just answer that or do you want to piggy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so in my, in my words, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a dev or anything, but, uh, our unique side chains assets layer uh combined with the contracts layer uh using a combination of some of the most popular programming languages in the world um, and using a backbone of apache spark and then when combined all of this with utxo technology which is a lot more secure than evm based technology uh, means we are more scalable and more secure than uh, bitcoin or ethereum and many other popular co coins will will ever be that's just in my my words i suppose is that right piggy did i say that right yeah um, more, more or less more or less yeah okay i mean i'm not quite sure if it depends on what sense they meant it in it could also be they're looking for marketing points but anyway it is what it is onwards and upwards all right Next question. Uh, do you have a marketing stroke advertising plan? If, if so, can you share some of it? Uh, well, I can say um, our plan has always been fully organic, multilingual seed marketing, where we can be positioned to be a worldwide information provider right from the first day we started. We are we are actually really pleased with how that has been delivered. Uh, bearing in mind that, that it, we haven't actually put cost into that right uh, as as until today uh, or very minimal anyway we are very close to a new stage of our marketing plan where we're bringing the community closer to the raptorium uh, closer with raptorium ambassador program uh, of which we are allocating a percentage of the developer to developer fee to support that uh, this new platform is being built um, and trialed with the Nowput team initially, um, with it being available uh, very shortly, ready for when we release assets. We are extremely excited about that, um, as it will interconnect several platforms into one, and um, it will also allow wallet outputs as well from that as well. Um, apart from that, uh, we are already supporting an ecosystem being built around um, our upcoming assets layer which includes new technology being UTXO DeFi marketplaces, which seems to be uh, starting to be a, a, a subject that's kind of heating up recently, um, especially with, you know, the Bitcoin NFTs and all that sort of thing. And also business vendor platforms, which David talks about a lot, which include um, certifications and product traceabilities and where, where we already have um, over 100 businesses that are interested in getting set up with us once we um, once we get rolling with assets, I suppose um, we're in also in touch with some large gaming teams um, firsthand, um, as we would also like to focus a lot on digital gaming assets. Um, you see, the thing is, our vision um, is a is a connected cold wallet uh, into these areas, which read the assets contained and can populate game populate the games with what is owned by the user. This also brings another part to the picture where we're going to be pushing for game ownership on chain also, where our marketplaces can trade licenses for games and where also a user can trade them back when they decide they would like to buy another game. This has appealed to uh, many as uh, today's tradable markets have declined in the light of untransferable uh, digital licenses and the diminishing hard copies of you know uh, the blu-rays and and the dvds as seen on the playstation and the xbox 
hope that answers your question. Uh, what is being done or can be done to get on more exchanges and higher tiered exchanges? Uh, we need more liquidity. Um, I'll yep. pass that to Piggy, I suppose. At the moment, absolutely nothing. And nothing is going to be done until things calm down considerably. Gate is teetering. MEXC is teetering. BKEX is teetering. BBOX shut down. Sticks shut down. Uh, Hotbit shut down. Multi-chain have a large portion of their funds locked up. Um, what else is going on? Binance are firing people for the first time ever. So, uh, no. <laughs> Just no. Um, it's a very unstable time to be uh, investing large amounts of money into exchanges. We're seeing uh, with the SEC, Gensler uh, cracking down, chasing massive world biggest exchange out of USA, etc. Right now is probably not the best time to be dumping large amounts of money into exchanges until things even out a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I think what I will say yeah. is we we are fully accepted to list on many of the top twenty five. We've spent months and months of work getting that, those in place. Um, this includes having the company feathered in place as well in order to make some of those things happen. You know, the, these exchanges have dug deep into the whole team to make sure we're, we're legitimate and, you know, we, we are what we say we are. And we have proved that we are entirely leg legitimate. Uh, and, you know, exchanges are extremely expensive. Uh, with some with some of the top 25 exchanges you know requiring up to a quarter of a million uh, dollars uh, which uh, includes the liquidity and the market making and things like that so it yeah. it's it's a huge cost but we but we've done all the hard work and we are ready we just need um, things to turn around market wise in order to get rolling with some of those things Okay, um, next question. Can you please put clips of only RTM updates from the weekly stream separate from the crypto stream or add timestamps? It is difficult to find the important information on just RTM when I have to skip through an hour long video with 80% of it not pertaining into, to RTM updates. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's a lot of work, uh, you know, doing everything that I'm trying to do to keep everything rolling. But I'm I'm gonna on as a few people have said this to me and I'm gonna try my best to make that happen. Um, this is something many people have been requesting, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'll try and make that happen. And uh, once this stream's over, I'll uh, I'll give some checkpoints on the stream, so it'll be much more easier for users to uh, to flip between. Another thing that was requested was um, um, auto subtitles. I just need to see whether I can actually do that on a live stream. Um, I think it'll be more when the stream is fully rendered by YouTube and then maybe I could turn it on that way. If I can't turn it on that way, then what's probably best if, is if I might if I maybe clip the stream, take out the parts that that you know people really just want to see uh, and then from clipping the stream maybe then it will move into the video section rather than the live section and then uh, the subtitles might work as well. So yeah, I'm going to try my best for you and uh, we'll get that rolling for sure. Um, next question. Uh, well, is Big Piggy waiting for block 69, 69, 69 for assets? Uh, brackets, you know it's true. Piggy, 69, 69, 69? Mm, that doesn't necessarily have something to do with me. That's got. There's somebody else on the team who's got more of a fascination with that number. I'm not going to let let it out of the bag who that is, but it could be. I'm not quite sure where that would put us time frame wise right now. What block are we on now? Let's have a look. All right, so we're we're at fifth, 
594,588, so it's not too far off. Not too far off. I mean, it could be a 69, 69, 69. We'll see. I mean, we did, yeah. we did, few, we did futures on the, uh, on the block 420 or whatever it was. 420, 420. 420, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question. When will we be able to see assets on the main net? Uh, Charlie? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, after copious amounts of testing on testnet. Yeah. They'll hit main net. So <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Uh, yeah, after much testing on testnet, they will hit main net. Okay. Uh, H and S, I'm just seeing your comment now. Thank, thank you, brother. Uh, that'd be great if you could uh, help me out with that. Uh, next question: In your opinion, why was RTM not as successful as other currencies? It's been two years on the market, and the market cap is still very low. Uh, Piggy, well, I mean, considering what's happened to the majority of the rest of crypto, we're doing pretty well, really. We're not dead. Most of our copies have died. We're pushing relentlessly. And we're focused on growing the coin, the ecosystem. We've we put our faces out there. Nothing to hide. Plenty of work. And we've got some amazing people working with us. And we'll get there. The current global climate, though, is <laughs> not exactly growth conducive, but uh, we'll see how it all goes. I think around this time next year, we are going to see some drastic changes in global economy and crypto after the Bitcoin halving, but we'll have to wait and see. All right. Uh, Politics can still wreck all of that for all of us. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you if you when you're done with your question, just say I'm done, and then I'll do the no, next one. Done. Okay. Done. <laughs> okay. What happened to the funds raised for exchange listing last year? Where are the transactions to show what happened? Are there RTM funds left? Uh, we answered that uh, up the top. I mean, we we can also show on the wrtm side where the funds are and also we can show on nodes as well where the rest of the funds are everything is accounted for um that we've explained about uh okay how long will it be until assets on rtm um charlie's just answered that but there's a simple answer for that and it's thune um how long will until contracts are live um that's a different question piggy Thuner. Thuner. Is that, is that Thuner? Is that before assets? Um, or, or just... It's, what, it's whatever Thuner means. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, next question is, where does the dev fund go? Uh, I'll pass that to Charlie. Well, actually, it's a better, better one for BP because he is the... Uh... All right. Oh. Okay, fair enough. Piggy, <laughs> can you answer that? Okay. Um, well, it incentivizes contributors to the project, with the primary emphasis being on development. We also have a marketing team of around 15 people. Let's just say they're not doing this for the money, but for the love of Raptorium as a project. As are we all. I mean, we are incentivizing the development as heavily as we can. However, given current pricing levels and the relatively modest developer fee, uh, we're not paying anywhere near a proper developer salary for the ones who do contribute almost full time work levels of code yeah, i mean in a nutshell everything majority goes back into the project 
Yeah. So. I mean, uh, core team have been paid out small amount, but at the same time, we've also put that back in again. We've just paid for new seed nodes for the backbone, etc., out of our own pockets. Uh, we've pumped, I don't know how much of that back into listings, etc. So, yeah. It is what it is, but it keeps us ticking over. All right. Are you... Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Uh, something interesting about Marcus Chenthita and others, Dubai guys, the Coffee with Crypto show goes to black. You know, can you make a resume? A resume? Uh, does he mean that uh, there were technical issues or something? Yeah. Um, the Riverside FM that was being used to broadcast it failed rather miserably uh, I don't think they actually were able to connect to their servers so a couple of times I find that I found myself talking into <laughs> into nothing I uh, got messaged on telegram and finally we redid the whole thing uh, via Google Meets they're looking at he should have a recording but it's the recording has a rather bad case of religion as he was using Riverside to record it, even the Google Meet session. Is that the radio app? Uh, it, it's not just radio. It's supposed to be like streaming with multiple rooms and all kinds of stuff in it. Yeah. So he's going to see if he can patch that together and then he'll release it on uh, the podcast he runs but it, it was a good talk um we're now in talks with quite a few different people from there about both now put and rtm and how they're quite interested in what we're offering that's different from just standard old evm and web3 Awesome. Are you, you done? Yep. Okay. Um, next question. If the team receives an invitation to the TV show Killer Whales, what are your expectations? Are you primary look, primarily looking for a mon monetary injection or do you have broader goals in mind? Well, I'll answer that. Um, it's the first big TV show for crypto um, and it's very good marketing for the project no matter if we if we had won or lost it um we want crypto to be mainstream and uh a tv show like this um will be a step big step towards that we want raptorium to be as popular as bitcoin and ethereum um we are not and we never will be afraid to stick our necks out to do things that people would not normally do our team, uh, me and Piggy, you know, we've got the confidence to do things like this and to show that we are better than many of the coins out there. It, that includes some of the com competition on that on that website. But this is because we, we love the project and it, it, it airs initially to millions of people all around the world. It also gives us more eyes from CMC who are running a large part of it meaning our profile will be updated properly and recognition for our work would be a hundredfold or more, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, another thing as well is money is not and never will be important to us. We, we earn our own money externally. Um, we always have done. Um, we want to build solutions that unite people and we want to show the world that there is another choice in the way to do things in blockchain and um we also want to show the world what we are working on because we are goddamn proud of it and we've worked so hard to build it and it, and it's as simple as that hope that answers your question bro 
Uh, next question. Why was Legion given a seven day timeout, uh, which appears excessive, while two others received timeouts, but were lifted for the other two, but not for Legion? Is it that these actions were taken to silence Legion, despite no racist comments being made during the chats? OK. Uh, I suppose uh, I'll, I'll answer that myself. Um, Legion was a naughty boy. And he broke server rules. If you go and check server rules and read them out, you will see that he broke the server rules. And he he, he came back and initially he just wanted to smash the project apart. And we we love this project and we 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 are good people. Uh, we 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 don't want to allow anyone to destroy what we've worked so hard to create which is why we are here answering, answering everything openly. And we also had a fully anonymous uh, question submission form as well. Um, in terms of Delgon and Sully, um, how you doing guys, if you're listening, um, they were encouraging the whole situation with naughtiness and stirring the pots as they always do, right? And yes, it, it is funny and we do have a laugh with Delgon and Sully. Um, we have some nice times with them. Um, they are in no way bad guys, and uh, I do admit that uh, action could have been delivered in a bit more of a modest way. Um, I, I fully admit that. Um, it was five in the morning for me, so I was kind of on edge uh, at that time, and I was very tired. Um, but yep, Sully and Delgon will always be and always will be friends of ours and friends of the project, and uh, nothing has changed at all. Um, as as is vibing is a good friend of mine as well nothing's changed we are on a level playing field and we we have uh, discussed a lot of things and we we've made up and uh, everything's fine um but they were timed out for a day uh, they are now reinstated uh, just just to evade the pot stirring uh, legion was timed out for a week but we are considering making that permanent based on recent comments and the way he's conducted himself. Uh, we really don't, we, we can't see how he can dig himself, dig himself out of that, especially the way he's conducted himself recently. But while I'm on, on here, I would like to remind everyone of the discord rules. Uh, so the first rule is to use common bloody sense. Uh, the second rule is if in doubt, ask core or ask a moderator. The third rule is, uh, which is why um, why the timeout happened, is make general a welcoming place for new arrivals, which wasn't the case. As soon as I logged onto Discord and I seen what was going on, it wasn't a welcoming place. If someone is off, etc., let a moderator know instead of messing about on your own. This includes keeping pronouns and similar off the server or your profile for it, as Piggy mentioned earlier about all that sort of stuff. Rule number four, have a, have a problem with any of the above, leave. Rule number five, keep what we have dedicated channels for to those channels and out of general. Thank you. The exception being via the bridge, uh, which is the Telegram bridge we have over to Discord, uh, particularly uh, NSFW channel to NSFW channels. Do not link, oh, this is number seven, do not link or discuss, oh, oh, sorry, I missed number six, uh, which is another reason for a timeout is number six is argue with server staff without initially complying with instructions, namely Sherm, equals goodbye. It's as simple as that, it's, it's a rule. Rule number seven, do not link or discuss NSFW channels outside of those channels. And rule number eight is no solicitation whatsoever. So it's as simple as that, guys. Um, we just literally, we're literally sticking to the rules. And this is entirely for newcomers and how we are perceived in the general channel. Next question for the AMA is what specific work or tasks did Legion undertake for the project? And are there any potential security risks associated with his, his departure from the team? Um, Charlie, do you want to answer that one? 
Yeah, I mean, there's uh, like I, I explained uh, earlier, uh, our security is better than it ever has been. Um, Legion was there to, you know, kind of on uh, on call to check uh, security, network security, the mechanics of the blockchain. Uh, Legion was uh, very good, especially in the beginning of the project when we were dealing with uh, a lot of the mechanics of the blockchain and the the algorithm, Ghost Rider. Legion has a very kind of unique way to look at and understand both math and time, which are both big on, you know, blockchain mechanics. So when we were on the early on days and dealing with um, the first setup and the uh, original, like, basic features and the algorithm, uh, that was very, very helpful. But, uh, you know, it was just there to not to audit the code or look at the code, but if we had specific question uh, concern about the code or ask them to look at how something worked, um, that's kind of why it was there. Um, there's no, uh, it has not left any gap in our security. Like I said, our security uh, for the project and the code and the network is better than it's ever been. So there, there's no concerns there at all. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I'm done with that. Piggy, you got anything to add to that? No, that sum, sums it up pretty much. Okay. Uh, next one is, I am not sure if I remember it correctly, but near the end of last year, there was mentions of listings and one of them was P2B, which didn't work out as we had hoped for, but we never heard of the other listings. Uh, we've already mentioned that and we've got, uh, we've been fully accepted on many of the topic exchanges. It's just a matter of paying for them and we will get there. We are working towards it. We've got goals set and we've, uh, we're really pushing towards that. Uh, okay. How will you address the issue of engaging in unprofessional conversations about team members and community members behind their backs <laughs> during voice chat sessions, considering that these sessions are not private and anyone can join, uh, in order to align your behavior with expected professionalism? Well, this isn't completely untrue. As you say, anyone can join. So join. If you want to join, join. Me and Sherm are there almost 24 seven. So if you want to join and have a chat, you will see we're there. We're there. We, we, we're, we, we're, we're there with open arms. It's we'll not a private anything. chat. It's yeah. not private. Uh, next we, will, we, we will occasionally troll people a little bit. Yeah, of course we troll, like, troll yeah. people. <laughs> I mean, but, but, but I mean, it's nothing worse than when somebody new joins everybody else is silent for the first 30 seconds and that can punk people out rather badly <laughs> yeah i suppose people don't like awkward <laughs> silences do they but yeah we're generally but, we're generally there I and mean, we're there during trivia and we, we've got the camera on as well um so you know we're, you can talk to us about anything we have granel there that's regularly there still talking about his motherboard since 1923 <laughs> Uh, we've got a thrift store there as well, who's recently had a, had some oral issues, which he's now got resolved and he's back with his thrift store wrapper, uh, which was nice the other day. You know, it, we get, we have viral there, regular, we have a nice, nice amount of people there. And we talk about many things and it is an open channel. Anyone can discuss whatever they like. Uh, okay. Next question is. I'm curious, is now put finance a fully fledged RTM project or more of a separate endeavor managed solely by members of the Raptorium team? Also, there are individual also are individuals from now put in the RTM discord, but they haven't been formally introduced. Can you please introduce them and give us some idea of their of the role they play in RTM? Um, I suppose I'll, I'll start off with this piggy if you want. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's a separate project. Um, Wang Xiaoyu and Zhu Baojie, Ling Chi are not connected with the RTM team 
Uh, I worked with them a long time ago in connection with BTC China. And they came to us with some ideas um, which were quite awful, really. We had a longer term discussion and uh, we came up with the UTXO DeFi model that we're using over there now. Uh, I don't believe that either of them is in the RTM Discord. Chuba uh, Jilin she has absolutely no English at all. Um, uh, Wang Xiaoyu does speak relatively limited English. You may have seen him around as Devo One. Um, but I mean, he is mainly responsible for developing the, what do you call it? The matching engine, um, the part that will eventually become a smart contract on RTM and quite possibly also on Polkadot in several other places. But that's what he's developing and it's working extremely well so far. Uh, what I will say on on that piggy is, you know, that as they are utilizing the Raptorium chain with futures and more, uh, we are helping them do it uh, to get, oh, yeah. to get uh, started. Yeah. I mean, that of course, of well, course. And and also, you know, with with the once they launch and if they're successful with with what they're doing over there, we we get this grant that towards the Raptorium project, which is is going to help us uh, kick things off, such as. You know some yeah. of the, some of the exchanges that are pending and the liquidity that's needed for that, and also yeah. and also some marketing as well. Um, so you know it's it, it helps the chain and it helps the project move forward. And I hope yeah. they, I hope they do succeed with their project. Okay. Exactly. Okay. The last question now from the form that we uh, that we sent out is. Um, I remember BP mentioning in an interview that once RTM achieves its promised status as a complete project, uh, the team in take the team intends to take a step back, allowing a DAO to take over. Can you elaborate on the specifics of this transition and how the DAO would function, uh, Piggy? Not really, because of lovely people like Mr. Gensler. So if I go out and say something like we will do smart node voting similar to what dash are doing just because we've got the code in for it that would be a very bad idea we would probably take a, a snapshot at some point and issue a governance token that can be used to vote with but again a lot can change between now and there so these are all just options we're looking at it's not really that easy to say <laughs> right now and i'm not going to say anything definitive on it because then uh, someone like the fec or similar could potentially decide to hammer users over it even if we haven't implemented any of what we're talking about. All right. So, yeah, that's that. Okay, I'm going to move over to the um, the YouTube channel now, and we're going to see if there's any questions for us on there. Like I said, we'll answer every single question going. We've got nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. Lots to talk we've about. <laughs> we've had two more come in on the form, though. How have we? What, what are they? I'm... I'm uh... Why are the trivia always rigged, and why does Todd always win? <laughs> well, trivia is always what? rigged. You know, we if it wasn't rigged, it wouldn't be popular. Um, so yeah, it's the most rigged game in blockchain, and that's the way we like it. And Todd always wins because he's he's a bot. Obviously, he's just it's a bot. Uh, he's yeah. a bot. Everyone knows that. Yeah. I mean, he's usually out within the first three questions. So uh, you know. It's best to get him out of the way, but also it's uh, he's very good on the bonuses as well. He's got some 
crazy knack for answering those. I have no clue how he does it. Um, I've been checking my uh, computer for viruses just in case he's hijacked that, you know, for the answers. <laughs> but, but yeah, Todd's a very good player and, you know, someone needs to book up the game and try and beat him because currently he's number one at trivia. And, uh, and rightly so, he's very good. Just turns quite good as well. And uh, actually, Sherm, you've been quite good lately as well. I have. Yeah, yeah. So you've been rigging it just right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, what's the next question on there, Piggy? Uh, the next one on there was, will assets allow for an artist... <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> will assets allow for an artist fee that will be applied to every transfer Well, with um... of a specific asset? Or will such functionality have to wait for contracts? It will have to wait for contracts, I believe. Yeah. This is not something we can just go in and make general rules of automation for. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll check the design paper one more time, but I don't think it's planned at the moment to include it at the protocol level. We uh, we are working with a, a team building a third party marketplace and we, we will have that option in place ready for when we do have the contracts where that can be executed. Initially, it'll be just straight up asset uh, trading, uh, but we will be adding royalties and other things like other popular asset platforms as we get the functionality on the chain in order to do so. Um, but yeah, things are moving really, really nicely over there and we're so excited to to get rolling with that um with the assets platform because it opens so many doors and uh, so many use cases even without the contracts in place and also uh even with uh you know the limited functionality on the on the on the protocol layer as we have right now we still can do quite a lot with it in terms of uh, di uh staggered distributions and things like that so initially it's still very exciting to have the marketplace up and and using those features is there any more questions on there, Piggy? Nope. Okay. All right. We're officially going over to the YouTube chat now. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Olivius is half sleeping. Joshua is saying, is there voices? Yes, we're talking. If you can't hear us, then I, I don't know why. Yeah. Um, RQ is saying, cheer up team, let's go with all the forces, no one stops us. Yeah, we are, we're always cheery. We're... Yeah. It's just crypto, you know, we, we get very tired because crypto means that you just sleep whenever you can get it. It doesn't, it's not, doesn't mean you have a pattern of any sort. It's just literally two hours here, two hours there. I mean, Piggy should be in bed right now. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should be. I live... Uh... Yeah. Alvidas is saying it is a bear market and no one likes it. Uh, that's true. If you if it's your first bear market, you're not going to like it at all. Uh, but some of us have been through three and four. Uh, oh, there's Charlie. <laughs> there he is. Uh, some of us have yeah, been through three or four going. bear markets, so we are we're not emotionally bothered by a, the bear markets. It's just entirely normal. That you know we we like we said before we've started this project in a bear market and we uh we're in a bear market right now nothing changes we're still working hard we're not emotionally changed we're still cracking jokes uh, we're still working hard so that that's all that matters yeah uh, a lot of other projects out there are you know now crawling into their little caves and not doing anything and their twitters are dead their socials are dead but not ours you know check it all out we're we're we're, we're very active uh Next question. Good stream today. Thanks, X Ray. Thanks for that. Uh, JD Knives is saying, How can we add markers in the Crypto Smith stream so the, we find the important stuff without having to listen to binary talk for half an hour asking for a, a friend? Yeah, I'll, I'll deal with you later, Mr. Jesse Lambert. Uh, but yeah, we are going to add uh, markers into all of your. Uh, Salty streams as well, Mr. Crypto Smith. 
uh well there's no more questions on the youtube channel so we're going to take a move over to the stream party chat and uh we will uh, scroll up a bit and see what's going on there if you've got any questions for us if we haven't answered anything that you want to ask us now ask us on the stream party chat that's where we are right now um uh first question is from uh pinja zhang who's saying sorry for having a problem accessing to google form but i would post my question in the chat for here for q a what is the function of chain decoupling after the asset layer and whether it is something related to the scalability of building for the future i think we yeah. we, we did mention that it, earlier but piggy if you want to go into that it, it's exactly right uh pinja jan um you're completely correct it is, it is basically scaling it's moving assets and asset transactions onto their own little chain which can run a lot faster than the main chain and um yeah that is what it is okay are you done yep okay uh salute thyself is saying whoa thanks for that bp this news was unknown and enlightening on the status of the process i assume he's talking about the whole exchange thing um uh mr salute thyself we were initially under nda so we never even mentioned it and we are still uh in a position where we can't go too deep into it while the, the hong kong investigations are, are proceeding so and, and, uh, they've made arrests there are people in jail. We're just waiting for confirmation that our funds will be separated out from the general bankruptcy. Uh, that will come from the courts eventually. Depends on how they do it. I'm not really sure if they do bursary hearings in connections with fraud cases in Hong Kong or if they do, or how they do it really. Uh, my Cantonese is bad. I can order beers in Cantonese. My Mandarin is fluent. Um, but most of the documents from the Hong Kong police are in Cantonese. So it's a, <laughs> it's a fantastically lovely process to fill those out and read them. That's how I've understood it so far. And yeah. All right. Uh, That's it. Balkan is saying, I guess we can call Big Piggy Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, uh, h &S is saying the update is easy to find. Fast forward until you see Binary. I assume he's replying to someone else. Uh, but Binary asked me about the update clip. Have DaVinci Resolve will travel. Okay. I'll uh, head into your DM. But thanks, thanks for your help, h &S, on everything you've been doing so far. It's absolutely brilliant. And... Uh, if you guys don't already know, uh, h &S has been uh, working on the on the blog site along with Alejandro as well and putting some great stuff out there. So really appreciate that. And he's just doing it uh, on his own back. He doesn't expect to receive anything for it. And he's just, uh, just helping the project for the community. And, you know, we've got to respect that. Okay. Uh... Falcon is saying just sleep when the crypto market closes simple. <laughs> yeah, but it never it never closes, does it? So I get that. I guess that that's what the joke is. Right. Yeah, it's all it's all right in the stock market. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Uh is Orion missed as usual, even though I am here. Well, it's good good to have you on there, Azorian. Good to have you with us. Yeah. Uh, Pinja Zhang is saying thanks for the detailed explanation, Piggy. Yeah. Uh, Todd is saying working on getting my toll my toll booth to accept RTM. <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. be that'd be good. Uh, Seop is saying thanks for the updates. It's not a problem, brother. Uh, we we are 
you know, here dedicated to you all, trying to work our best and do good for the project and do good for you all. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the comments on the uh, stream party chat. So now for the final bit of the stream, uh, what we're going to do is uh, head over to the normal uh, weekly talking points. Uh, we did put more focus on the uh, on the uh, on the AMA this week, um, so we haven't got as many weekly talking points, um, but we will uh, brush over those as well. Um, uh, so as many of you know, we, we've uh, installed an Arabic uh, marketing team in place. They have a Discord set up. They've got a Telegram set up. They've got a news channel set up. And and they're doing some uh, really nice things over there. The Stacy bots in there that trees help get set up. Um, they've got the verification system that me and Sherm have been helping them with. We do probably need to do a bit more work on getting that uh working a little bit better but uh but you know we're we're it's a it's a big market the arabic market and we're more than uh pleased to spend some time on you know, getting them fitted into the team and uh yeah and you know anything we can do to help them we're, we're we're helping them out just like we did with the spanish team and just like we've done with every other um multi multilingual approach that we're pushing on with uh, we had the W3ST on Friday, Piggy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a couple of good talks. Uh, my LinkedIn has so many notifications, I'm not really opening it at the moment. I'm hiding from it. <laughs> um, there some, were some good talks. Quite, I quite, quite, some good talks, but. Uh, there's, there is among some of the other projects on there a willingness to look realistically at some of the problems on Web3. And I mean, that's something we can work with. Uh, I, I was very surprised, really. Uh, it's a big positive. Uh, it's a massive positive from my point of view. It's something that's very badly needed. Um, need to explore as many alternatives to to orthodox, um, basically EVM dogma as possible, because orthodox EVM dogma is going to kill crypto otherwise. Okay, uh, I've got here as well. The you had uh, coffee and crypto on Saturday. So, can you go into a bit more in depth about what was talked about on that? I know you brushed over it on the uh... um, UTXO DeFi, how that works. Uh, I've still got to finish that paper with Bong at some point. This it was supposed to be earlier this week. Can't remember why it didn't end up being earlier this week. Right now. But uh, at some point in the coming week, that should be out and published. And uh, that generated quite a bit of interest from several parties over there, um, including some potential venture capital for now, I'm happy to say. Awesome. Um, and we sort of segued into privacy and what good privacy is and how that needs to be implemented and we are looking at whatever will be generally speaking acceptable from an exchange compliance point of view once we're done with features development we'll be looking at adding something like that to the mix. Initially, I think we'll be looking at adding Lelantis from Firo, which is a fantastic mechanism. Because what you do with that is you essentially burn your coins and then you redeem them, and they don't have a transaction history after you redeem them. There's no 
blatant obfuscation like on Monero. There's no really complicated, horribly long mathematics that goes wrong like on Zcash uh, and Zcash forks. It, it seems like it's an ideal option for quality opt-in privacy for later, but we, we'll see. If it means we can't be listed in a lot of places by then, once we get to that stage, we'll have to reevaluate what we're doing. But to me, it looks epic. Okay. Um, I've got written down here a Legion announcement. Do we want an additional announcement of him uh, departing the project at this section of the stream? Charlie, do you want to give another Legion announcement? Uh, yeah, no, I don't think that's needed right now. It's uh, It's been very well talked about. I think everybody is pretty aware of what's going on. Uh, if anybody has any further questions on it or concerns, uh, we're here. Just let us know. Awesome. Um, we had a new blog pro post from uh, H&S and Alejandro um, all about Ghost Rider and, and Tree Nugent. Uh, so go check that out on our blog. That is blog.raptorium.com. And it's quite a nice written post. Uh, yeah, so big thanks to big thanks to Alejandro and uh, and H&S Biosafe as well. Although he's calling himself H&S now. Will also that be a, uh... A new series or a new uh, yeah. I noticed there was a community corner uh, tag on it so yeah we've uh, it is a new series yes and uh, they're, they're going to be regular and it's it's brilliant I mean we needed some action on the blog blog site we've been so busy lately working on all sorts of things uh, we do admit that we, we we wasn't really that focused on that side of things but it's nice now that we've got you know um, a guy that's that doesn't need to but he's more than willing to to put the work in and uh and help us get some content rolling on there so again big thanks to hns and alejandro as well um also hns is actually is is um now loaded up the uh the draft of seminaro 2 for conversion and uh which will be formatted and getting out as soon as possible um so uh and as the more he does the more he gets the hang of it and the more he's going to make the content better on the blog site so uh you know he's putting some real work on there and it's fully appreciated there's a even a third one on there now even though there's only one uh the first one published so we've got another two to roll uh but we don't want to throw them all out at once so uh we're going to space them out a little bit but yeah awesome stuff um, it looks like there are some major data issues uh, from the trade ogre markets on CoinGecko. Uh, if you check, uh, all the numbers on there are absolutely bonkers. Um, this applies to all coins that are shooting uh, data over to the aggregator uh, CoinGecko. Um, absolutely ridiculous numbers, so I don't know what's going on there. But if you do if you do check out CMC, the numbers are correct on there, and they're not having issues. So. I don't know what's going on, but I assume it's going to be sorted uh, pretty soon. We have reached out to CoinGecko to see what's going on, but I assume they are inundated with people ex uh, asking exactly the it, same thing. It, it, it's um, Ogre changed some things in their API without letting anybody know. Well, there we go. And finally, uh, from me, uh, we are going to be doing a dev appreciation meme contest where we will be supplying images of our developers, our treasured developers, and uh, we will have a blank background and you will be able to meme the images however you see fit. I know that Wiz is probably going to be very excited about doing this. Um, we might do a few team members as well. Um, but what we're going to do, um, it was actually Charlie's idea this was, um, but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to run this uh, from the end of this stream until uh tuesday evening well to be midnight wednesday morning sort of early hours of wednesday morning we're going to run it until then we're going to have prizes for first second and third uh places the judge 
the judges of the images are going to be the community themselves so you're going to be responding with an emoji on the submissions uh, for the memes that you that you have posted in the submissions channel those with the most uh, reactions on the memes uh, are the winners um, so uh, I mean it's uh, highly recommended that you you uh, you add emojis to your own submissions because you could probably win it by doing that <laughs> But yeah, we're going to shoot that contest up as soon as the stream's done. And now I know that Alejandro and Sherm here have patiently been sitting here waiting, completely bored out of their eyeballs, waiting for us uh, team to, to get finished uh, with, with our updates and things. So uh, I'm going to hand it over now to Sherm. Um, so Sherm, how are you and how is the uh, Discord community? I'm doing well. Obviously, um, a lot of drama this week. <laughs> a lot of salt being thrown around, but you know, I think it's good we're all moving past that now. And uh, yeah, just been busy with you with the Arabic uh, Discord and getting that set up. And yeah, I think everything's going well. Okay, so you've waited uh, about two hours to say that. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, well, 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 actually, I did hear um, we do have a new battlefield potential tournament coming up in the near, somewhat near future. All right, right with infantry, you know, an infantry type style one. We don't have a date yet, but that's in the works. Okay. Yeah, so, absolutely. Be an infantry uh, tournament coming up. I'm still trying to decide just how that will roll down. I'm I'm looking at the battlefield maps, trying to find something with a hill so I can name it Hamburger Hill. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes but uh, it, it'll be a blast all of our battlefield stuff is you know it's a small group of us but we're all uh you know pretty tight-knit in the community and i mean yeah, have a good time yeah i mean you want to come frag me and blow me up on rpg or sherm you want to get some some revenge on the moderators or whoever yeah i'm here <laughs> bring it let's go so charlie I feel, there. I feel like i need to get revenge on you you were playing dirty the other day I wasn't very pleased about that. I was rather salty. Oh, you were salty. You're well, definitely yeah, salty. Yeah, I was. I was salty. I, I don't even know what I did. I mean, uh, but yeah, bring the salt. You were shooting me. I was on foot. I never even got in my tank. It well, was... I mean, the the rules were you had to be in a tank to well, that, make a kill. Those rules were rigged. I was in rigged. a tank. I killed. It. I was in a tank. I killed your ass. So. Yeah, but you were you were basically <laughs> hanging by the entrance of my base. How could I? How could I even miss your gunshots by getting into a tank? <laughs> Red this dance. Is impossible. Next time we do a tank battle, over. Charlie, you're dead. I'm telling you, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. That's why I love to hear. <clears throat> bring it. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring it. Don't <laughs> worry. I'll get my practice in. There we go. Alejandro, how are you? And uh, what have you been working on? And how is the Spanish community? Uh, hi, guys. Uh, we are fine. Uh, do you hear me well there? Can I just say, yeah, your, yeah. your mic sounds incredible yeah. today. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are fine. Um, actually, the part of the community, we got a small team where we make some decisions. They decide to shut down Mina Facil, the pool. They don't want to deal with that anymore. Uh, we are looking for a new developer to see if they can build a new pool with different kind of things. Uh, we see what's going on with that. Um, I make a weekly today. Uh, we are still working on a place for the community um, slowly, but it's going beautiful. Um, we are creating many things, marketplace. We are doing many things for the community. It goes slow, but we are a small team. We are working with that, with that, and without, uh, of course, uh, not support from the rest of the community. We are dealing with uh, uh, ourselves. We are supporting ourselves, and we are doing good. Um, and now I'm working with a girl here in Brazil. Brazil is a market of 200 million persons or 180 million persons. A lot of people here in Brazil. And they like cryptocurrencies, so we. I'm talking to this girl. She's going to help me with uh, building a community for Portuguese. And uh, since tomorrow, I have to free some more time so we can start at least putting some knowledge in Portuguese, writing blogs on Portuguese, and 
uh, show, you know, uh, in, t in Twitter and in, in Facebook and Instagram, try to put some content on Portuguese and try to get some people of Brazil to the project, which I think is fantastic because there had been people before, like this guy on YouTube, he's making videos about Raptorian and he really liked the project. So uh, I think a lot of people will like the project in Brazil. I'm living here and I'm, I'm, I speak a little Portuguese, so I'm dealing with this girl and she's going to help me. She wants to do, do it for the community and I think it's great. We're finding more people uh, to help us on the community. Fantastic. Yeah, yes. good stuff. Uh, what's the subject of the new, uh, the new flick book? Uh, today I talk about... Um, uh, maybe you maybe you know about it, Utopia. They are the guys from the 1944 group, uh, a 1984 group. These guys are hackers, and some of them are crypto uh, anarchists, and they really like to do privacy and things like that. I've been testing that. Uh, uh, um, blockchain they got a, a nice peer-to-peer -peer system they got chat they have web page they have everything uh, i've been working with that uh, ecosystem uh, uh one year ago i really like it and now they are great they put um, artificial intelligence chat gpt inside of the whole ecosystem and it has been working very nice they have a usd uh, stable coin with their coin and the mining process is very good. I think they are very good. It's part of the blockchains community. And I wanted to share a piece of the semanario with that. So it's part of the of the of the projects like Raptorium or or this new project Nowput or whatever project like Atomic Dex or you know who, who is looking for privacy and who's looking for uh, good things for people and I think freedom, privacy and the centralization is very good so I like to talk about it in the weekly and I think it's good, I got good points and it's a, it's good I hope that people like it yeah, yeah they do I've, I've had so many comments about it it's, they're, they're absolutely brilliant and uh, some some really nice work from you, Alejandro. Um, yes, I, I wish I can make it better. I think we, if we make it on blocks, it's very good because seems now, like you see, ChatGPT just pick up all the whole, all information from the network. Mm -hmm. So the, it, to be on the weekly on Flickbook is very difficult to be on the network. So I'm I'm moving. I, I'm gonna keep the the Flickbooks because they are nice. You know, people like to read or yeah. whatever. But I am working on something else, um, more than blog, and we are more working on a podcast so that people can hear my voice and read podcasts about the weekly, but in podcasts. So we are we are working on it. I think I need a little more time. I'm really out of time, but if I got more time, I'm very sure I will do better things for our community. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much, Alejandro. Yes. Okay, um, I'm just going to double check the YouTube stream. Uh, Ordenham is saying, please add timestamps or shorts of the important stuff. No offense, Crypto Smith. <laughs> Salt is thrown. <laughs> Towards Gaming is saying, yes, CMC looks fine. Thanks for that. Uh, Bud Spencer saying, good night all. Okay, guys. Well, we have oh. answered absolutely oh. every single question going. We never missed a single question. Oh, yeah. Um I think that's that just about rounds it up. Um, it's anyone. Um, on anyone want to say what, anything? Um, new scam going round is. I think it's mainly targeting Discord moderators or people with elevated positions. A new scam going round is um, people from what look to be like legitimate projects will come around and offer you a job then they will they'll ask you if you're interested in working with another project or able to work with another project then uh, as soon as you start offering it asking any questions about what is this and what's it all about 
you get a, a sketchy Discord invite. Sketchy meaning it doesn't have the full HTTPS link like you normally have on an invite. It's embedded into the conversation you have with them. Um, once you get onto that, they have a web verification bot that will try to steal your authentication tokens. This is why you need to have 2FA enabled. Um, and it's also why you need to be very suspicious about <laughs> links. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Yeah. And I also heard as well with like booklets, or bookmarklets yeah. as well, uh, like yeah. dragging uh, things to, uh, to your bookmark bar to verify. Don't do that because there could be Java code in there to steal your Discord tokens as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't click on anything you're not sure of. If you're not sure of it, copy and click it and paste it in Notepad and have a look at what it looks like. Because uh, as soon as you copy it out of, you know, Discord or whatever, and you paste it in a Notepad, uh, you're if it's if it's not a legitimate link or it's something suspicious, you're probably going to have an alarm bell there once you paste it out in uh, plain text. So, yeah, be careful out there, people. Be very Lots careful. Crap going around. Okay, guys, um, this that's about wraps it up for the stream. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Also at Twitter and Instagram at Raptorium. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure tonight having everyone and being a bit more in a relaxed atmosphere and able to answer all the questions in length. Um, thanks to everyone on this stream who's attended: Alejandro, Sherm, Charlie, Piggy. Um, and thanks, thanks everyone for watching the stream. Uh, I know it's been uh, a stream that everyone's been looking forward to to watching, and um, I just, I just really hope that we've answered everything uh, as in depth as you would have, um, as you would like to us to, as we've tried to do that. So, if um, if anybody's got any more questions, we're always around and we're always willing to ask questions. Absolutely, yeah, no, feel free to ask. We're always in the Discord. What we're never willing to do is entertain bullshit that isn't backed up by something. Absolutely. Um, that just leads to me exercising powers of moderation and a big fuck you. And on that note, <laughs> we'll catch you later, guys. <laughs> All right, yeah. thanks. thanks for coming, everyone. Cheers. Catch you later. Yeah. Night.